Alright, so, uh, food prep. Today is Friday, September something, September 6th, 2019. Um, I don't know if I'm in camera or not. I think with my big fat head, I'm probably fitting it in there. But, I want to kind of give a before, a during, and an after. So, this is before. I just got back from the store. Uh, I don't know, like about 130, 140 bucks. But, so there's celery there. Three pounds of turkey in the bag, uh, like six or seven chicken breasts. There's like six pounds of beef in there, two dozen eggs, cabbage, spaghetti squash. I literally just came home, turned on the oven. Somebody asked me earlier, what do I cook my food at? I'm lazy. I literally cook everything at like 350 to 375. Um, that's just how I do. So I will cook everything. I just kind of keep an eye on everything and it's just multitasking. So I do not like multitasking at all, but if you're going to multitask anywhere, the kitchen and food prep is the place to do it. So I'm going to try and put a couple of videos together and see if this turns out smoothly or not. We'll see. But so this is before. Let's see what during looks like. All right. So a little during, uh, still haven't got the celery. All I do with chicken breasts is just long slice them like that. They kick, cook a little bit quicker. If you want smaller ones, you can just cut them uh, width-wise too. Make them into like little smaller bits. So I just pull one out, slice it, throw it on there. Once that bad boy is filled, it will be going in there. Right now we got three pounds of ground turkey, six pounds of ground beef, fan going just to keep it all cooking. Eggs and cabbage coming up soon. Spaghetti squash, right and chow. All right, moving along. So there's the turkey. Uh, it's not gonna be in that container for long. I'm gonna start portioning things out here in a minute, but it's sitting in there. I don't have a whole ton of pots and pans, so the turkey is cooked and sitting in there. That's the pot it was in, that's clean, so now those eggs are going to be going in there as soon as that water is done. Also, if you want to know how to do the best boiled eggs ever, um, the way I always do this, and I'm going on like a two year winning streak now with boiled eggs, get the water boiling, put the eggs in there when the water starts boiling. Once those eggs are in there, the water will stop boiling because the eggs are colder. So as soon as the water starts boiling again with the eggs in there, go seven to 10 minutes. And then as soon as that seven to 10 minutes is up, I take it off of there, I'll bring it over to the sink. I'll run cold water over the eggs, maybe two or three times to fill up the pot. After draining it, run the cold water over two or three times. I will take these two ice cube trays right there and throw them in the pot with the eggs with the cold water and i'll let that sit until the uh the ice is completely melted and that will get you grade a boiled eggs every single time all right i gotta get back to this beef see you in a second eating the last of the leftovers draining beef eggshells from last week's leftovers more eggs going along with that little stubborn bastard right there why you got oh wait there's two of them with you guys. Anyway, I gotta watch that in a minute. So I got the cabbage all cut up and ready to go. That is gonna go in there. As soon as that is done eating, done eating. as soon as I'm done eating that, I will wash that once I can get that out of the way. So it's like bing, bing, bada, boom. All right, and this is how we portion. We still got this mess over here. I just finished eating that, the turkey and chicken and beans. Now I'm taking this cooked turkey that I just did, one container at a time. These smaller ones are for Holly. So she is, even though she's got the biggest part of my heart, she gets the smaller containers. So she gets about four and a half ounces of meat, whether that's turkey, beef, chicken. Come on, buddy. All right, so four and a half, take that off. We have it teared out, so and that one's there. Anybody that doesn't know how the scale works, um, just in case, because you never know, don't assume. So if it's zeroed out, you put the thing on there and you hit that little button that says T-A-R-E, tear, and that zeroes it out. So there's that. Now, we'll go, all I'm doing is scooping. All right, this is hard to record, scoop, and narrate and pay attention to the scale. So I will go through this process until 
she has about uh, probably there's four all together. I might do one more turkey, um, and then I'll do the same thing with all the beef. And I don't really do any turkey. That's just a personal preference. I'll do the chicken. That's probably done about now. Um, so she'll get four and a half ounces of turkey, four and a half ounces of beef. I do six, six and a half ounces of beef and six, six and a half ounces of chicken. I think I said that all right. I don't really know. But so this is step one of prepping out the food. If I'm over 0.2 ounces, I'm not freaking out because we're not trying to compete or anything right now. So if we're a little off in the macros, I'm not stressing it. But so this process, just getting the meats set, is kind of step one. So we'll come back here in a second. All right, so here we are. We're nearing completion. Um, all of these, so I boil, I hard boil pretty much two dozen eggs every week. Um, these were left over, so I obviously didn't go through all of them, but I have a total of 20 eggs right there because um, Holly has five beef meals I have the makings of five beef meals. Every one of those beef meals is going to get two eggs a piece. Two eggs a piece. Um, we, I try to get her to have two to three eggs a day. I'm having anywhere from like two to six. A uh, number of different reasons, mainly choline and biotin. But so I'm going to go through and crack two, 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 and each two of those eggs are going to go in these beef dishes. That's cabbage. That. Uh, got a little burnt because you know cabbage doesn't cook really well on high heat the whole time but when you're focused on cleaning stuff every once in a while, <coughs> every once in a while you make a mistake so a little bit of burnt cabbage is the mistake today I tried to throw out the really bad pieces but so sorry baby I love you but so we got cabbage 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 that's her spaghetti squash um, this is that's driving me nuts because I'm a neat freak. I want that clean right now. So I got to wipe that off. It's driving me ape shit. So uh, eggs, chicken is cooked. I have also, I cut up uh, celery down there. There's cauliflower underneath that. And then um, there's leftover beef and turkey. That's right there. That's everything I cooked that is not prepped out into meals. So. What this is going to look like now is it's going to be um, taking celery that I just cut up and like dicing them into some of these. Like I said, putting the eggs in there. That chicken also got a little burnt. Damn it, Andy. Um, but that chicken is going to get um, pour, part, uh, <laughs> portioned out or partitioned out either way for most of my meals. Again, Holly's more, she likes the ground turkey more than the chicken. So the chicken's pretty much mostly me. I'll fit that into, there's a total of six breasts there, all sliced like you saw earlier. So those are gonna be going into Tupperware containers. And then honestly, probably about half of that will stay in the fridge just to kind of snack on throughout the day. So yeah, uh, we'll probably have one more video when this is all said and done because we gotta clean that got to take all that crap out, got to dry all them, and make everything nice and spick and span up and yeah. So, be back in a minute. We're recording. So, thankfully, now I can do it and do other stuff while she's recording. Thank God. So, my beautiful wife is behind the camera. Hi. There you go. <laughs> so, this is the finished product. Well, almost finished product. So, there's like three random things of chicken over here. Uh, still not quite sure what I want to do with these, but each one of these have just a little over six ounces of chicken. I may just throw a lid on it and throw it in the fridge and take that with me as is. I might, you know, put a little bit of mustard on it. I, I love mustard. I might put a little bit of like salsa uh, or marinara in an extra t container and take it with me. I might throw some sweet potatoes on that. Who knows? Um, my point in all of this is not to say this is the food that you need to prep. I don't care what you eat, right? Well, I do if you're one of my clients, but it's not, I'm not saying that you gotta have beef. You can do this as a vegan, as a vegetarian if you want to. You can do this with chicken if you want to because you don't like beef, whatever it might be. Everything I have here, we have for specific purposes. I have beef because there's more nutrients in it than chicken. You're gonna get more iron, more zinc, more B2 or B12. I have the eggs, like I said earlier, for the biotin and the choline. 
um, a lot of liver health, acetylcholine for brain, being able to think and function. I've got the celery because I want some vitamin K, I want some insoluble fiber, and I got the cabbage for soluble fiber, steamed cabbage for soluble fiber. Um, the cauliflower, you know, most people don't, they're good about maybe getting greens, but they don't get the whites or the, the blues and, and blacks and the yellows and reds in the vegetables. So we've got a plethora of color, a plethora of protein, a plethora of healthy fats. So we've got Holly's little last few turkeys here, ground turkey. She wanted some spaghetti squash on them, so we got spaghetti squash. This is spaghetti squash, carrots, turkey, spaghetti squash, carrots, turkey, spaghetti squash, cabbage, turkey, celery, cabbage, turkey, and then obviously the other ones are some mixture of cauliflower, cauliflower, eggs, cabbage. So you get a feel for what all of this looks like at the end. Now, one of the more important parts, I can fit that out of the way. This is iodized salt. We do have pink Himalayan salt as well, but to my understanding, pink Himalayan salt does not have much of one critical ingredient, micronutrient, that's iodine. Iodine is important for a healthy thyroid. So we take this, this is portioned out easier than my second rule, God made dirt, dirt don't hurt. Uh, no, I don't do this with the food. Um, but, what was I saying? Your <laughs> iodine, iodine is good for your thyroid, so this is a lot easier to do than pouring it out of that stupid container with the metal spot spigot that doesn't work. So um, we'll do a quarter teaspoon, just a quarter teaspoon is gonna give you 50% of your iodine for the day. Uh, and most Americans, unless you're getting salt or eat a lot of seaweed and kelp and things like that, you're going to be deficient in iodine and if you have thyroid issues, that might be something you want to look into. So there are a number of nutrients you want to make sure you get for your healthy thyroid. Iodine, selenium, tyrosine, carbohydrates, believe it or not. So these are all important. So I won't do every single one of these meals because we also take a kelp supplement for getting a little extra uh, iodine. But I try to do at least all of the beef because Holly and I both every day are going to do at least one beef meal. Um, now, the more you sweat, if you drink a lot of water and you sweat a lot, then you're going to want more iodine, more salt, right? Because you're sweating it out and all of that. So, in addition to the salt, really the only other thing we might do is, and you can tell all of the seasonings I put back and then the one that Holly put back <laughs> would be cinnamon. And when you're colorblind, that's not fun because that and cayenne pepper look the same to me, as does chili powder. I think she does this on intentional like purposes. Just for one day I want oatmeal and it's going to be cayenne pepper oatmeal. I'm like, what the hell is that? So, but we have these Mrs. Dash and yes, they're salt free. And yes, I just put salt on there, but it's because I don't want extra salt. So Holly's really big on the onion and herb and garlic and herb. I'll do the extra spicy, the table blend. Uh, there's another one that I'm out of right now that I'm kind of blanking on, but another big favorite combination of mine, which I'm out of paprika, but I'll do curry powder, a little bit of ginger, and a little bit, a little bit of paprika, and I'll mix that all up. Um, ginger is great for digestion, for just kind of calming your stomach. It's got a number of other benefits. This is something I think a lot of people don't focus on enough, is um, not using herbs and, and spices like enough, right? Because like I said, um, I mean, rosemary, rosemary is an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor, which just basically means it's slowing down the breakdown of acetylcholine in your brain. So it's going to help you have better memory, better ability to focus. That's rosemary. It's, a, it's an herb. You can get the oil and put it in the diffuser. It is actually an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor. Other people take medications to do that. So learn your herbs, but digression coming back, after I go through and season these, which I mean can look as simple as this, you just shake it up a little bit. If you're watching this to learn how to season food, we're way above your pay grade right now. <laughs> so all you're gonna do is you want it on your spaghetti squash ones. Yeah. So spaghetti squash ones. I'll just sprinkle a little bit over here, and then like once I put the lids on these, I'll shake them up a little bit. Um, but I mean it's as simple as that. So. I don't know how long this took me all together, two and a half, three hours. If you notice, you want to pan. All those dishes are clean that were loaded up in there. Look at it all clean and dry. So all this is now is getting a stack of lids and just pop, 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 stacking them all up, putting them in the fridge, and I'll show you what that looks like here in two seconds. So go ahead and stop there. 
All right, Coach Holly. Now what? Oh, on the spot. You could win all this food. <laughs> if you guess the right words on Wheel of Fortune or whatever the game show is that people watch now. So, there we go. Easy peasy. Whole bunch of meals all the way back there. Whole bunch of meals back down there. Uh, and then it's Friday. So, we, on the weekends, we'll eat a little bit. Uh, we actually on an almost weekly basis fast on Sundays, like a 24 hour fast, just a little light, something to kind of flush out for the week coming up. Um, tonight and tomorrow, we'll probably eat a lot. Tomorrow's are always like our boot camp workout, so we're really pushing it hard. So um, yeah, that's how you food prep. So now all next week, Monday through Friday, when I'm running out the door to, to train clients and go to class and she's running out the door to go to work and train with me as well, um, we're all set for food. We just throw it in the cooler or a bag and we're out the door and that's how you make a happy, healthy, stress-free environment for your food all week yes. long. So, yes. I love you. I love you. Oh, and we love you. Later. <laughs>